So we are on our way uh, just outside of St. Louis. We're going to be going to Driftwood Music, where a fellow by the name of Pete Buncher, a very, very good uh, vintage uh, luthier, is working on some stuff we got, including this guitar that we're going to be looking at today. Uh, it's a 47 D28. Um, now, this is going to be kind of cool because it's Brazilian rosewood. Um, this guitar came to us. We played as the Chapmans played a festival out in Washington, and the promoter that was running this, also kind of a, a friend and, and fan of the band, she lost her husband a few years ago and has had this guitar. It was his favorite guitar. And she, you know, has finally got to the point where she's like, it's time to get this to a new home. And she felt like we were the best place to do that. So we decided, uh, she sent it to us, and we kind of evaluated it, went through it. It needed to have a pickguard replacement. It had a really big pickguard that was on it, and we're going to remove that, get it back to where it was. So I'm expecting to see some wear and tear underneath what was the pickguard, because uh, they added this really big monstrosity. And we want to make it look more uh, closer to original than what it was. So that's what we're going to be doing. This guitar came to us. It will be for sale at the shop. We, uh, she wanted us to get it uh, on consignment for her. So we're going to be putting it up for sale. And the best guy I knew to do it is Pete. So we got it out here. We're going to go pick it up right now and see how it turned out. All right, so we're here in St. Robert at Driftwood Music. I'm here with Pete Buncher. Pete's been doing a bunch of restorations and repair work for quite a while, and we trusted him for a few different projects now, including this one that's right here. We're in the new shop that's new and old, and there's been a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff happening here, uh, which is, you know, I get it. It's uh, we Like every music store, we always have a lot of various different things that get thrown at us and we kind of make it all happen. Um, but we're in the shop today. It doesn't have the lights, but we're going to make it work because <laughs> right. uh, it's coming back. But the shop is coming back together. You're hoping to have that later, probably this year. Yeah, yeah. Good. So hopefully late summer, early fall, we hope to be back up and running at, at full capacity. Yeah. And have all of our <laughs> renovations and restorations done. So, yeah, that's yeah. a cool part about having old buildings is they always need renovations and restorations, just like old guitars. And that's Absolutely. what we have right here. We got a uh, 47 D28 that we got in here from a friend of ours, actually in uh, Washington. It was her late husband's. It was his main guitar. He was a big deal in the bluegrass uh, society up there. In fact, uh, this Darrington, Washington was beginning of that festival. Big, big deal. Um, and then, uh, like I said, it passed away. She's had this guitar. She wants to find it a new home, decided it was time to go. And this one had a weird project because it had a monstrosity of a pickguard. Do you have that pickguard right here? Do we have it? We do. We've seen this. I mean, it's not every guitar, but there was like a time period in the 50s, 60s, even into the yeah, 70s. Everybody sure. wanted big pickguards. And some of them were decorative. Some of them were just out of necessity. That's what this one was. There was yeah. some wear and tear that had been there. And I'm assuming that the, uh, the assumption of the previous owner was to protect the instrument to put this monstrosity on here. It yeah. doesn't look very great when it was on there. And also kind of kills the sound a little bit. Uh, yeah. Big, heavy, extra piece of plastic that wasn't in there. So we tasked you with getting it back closer to an original guard. And I guess that's what we're going to see here, how to go. Yeah, absolutely. It, come off it came out fantastic. Yeah, and, I, and I'm very glad that we did that to this guitar because I think tonally it's it's going to benefit from it as well. Awesome. Um, when they put on this other pick guard, uh, they use kind of like a sticker back, which really? works like a shock absorber. It's kind of a rubbery thing, and it was real thick on there. So I was able to, to get that out, get, get all the old um, kind of adhesive that was kind of gel-like 
off of it. Um, now we've got a, a great celluloid pickguard, which is historically correct for this guitar. Awesome. It's on there with hide glue, which uh, which dries hard and becomes more one with the top and, and lets it lets it move. Very cool. So that was already, as you see, lots and lots of wear all over this guitar. And I understand why they would try to cover it up. It just wasn't the right look and and like i said it's a tone killer uh and and this should be a pretty great guitar i would think uh you probably played it more oh, than yeah. i did uh is it a good one it's, a, it's it? a good one all right let's yeah, see you might want to turn the game down on the mic <laughs> Big difference. Like honestly, I played this guitar when it was uh, when we got it in, and it sounded good. It was a good guitar, um, but man, that actually came to life. So uh, there you go. We have a forty-seven D twenty-eight. Got some player wear. Got some playing going on here. Um, but we're gonna get it back into the shop and uh, should be ready to go. And I want to thank Pete for checking it out, getting it ready here, so uh, y'all know now. It's been done right, and we'll get it to you hopefully very soon.